Hello everyone, welcome to In Depth. My name is Aditi Nagpal Girotra. March 3rd is the birth anniversary of Jamshedji Nusarwanji Tata, India's iconic entrepreneur, builder, and legendary philanthropist, whose values and principles have been kept alive by the Tata Group for scores of years now. Born in 1839, Jamshedji Nusarwanji Tata's ambitious efforts helped catapult India into the League of Industrialized Countries. They gave India entire cities that are today the manufacturing hubs of the country. Jamshedji Tata is regarded as a legendary father of Indian industry. So influential was he that in the world of industry, Jawaharlal Nehru referred to Tata as a one-man planning commission. But Jamshedji Tata was more than just the entrepreneur. He was a patriot and a humanist whose ideals and vision shaped an exceptional business conglomerate. In today's In-Depth, we talk about the man who created cities of steel, whose ideas shaped the ways of modern life of citizens, and whose philanthropy and values of humanity gave a better deal for its workers. March 3rd, 2020 is the 181st birth anniversary of Jamshedji Nusarwanji Tata, a man who was more than just an entrepreneur and helped India take her place in the League of Industrialized Nations. His vision inspired the steel and power industry in India, set the foundation for technical education and helped the country leapfrog to the ranks of industrialized nations. The father of Indian industry, Jamshedji Tata was an Indian pioneer industrialist who founded the Tata Group, India's biggest conglomerate company. Jamshedji Tata was born to Nausher Wanji and Jeevan by Tata on 3rd March 1839 in Navsari, a city in the South Gujarat. Jamshedji Tata had a formal Western education because his parents saw that he was gifted with special mental arithmetic from a young age. For a more modern education, he was later sent to Bombay. Though he started working with his father at an early age of 14, Jamshedji's real contribution came only after he had graduated in the year 1858. At a time when India was still recovering from the revolt of 1857, Jamshedji helped in taking his father's business abroad by setting up branches in Japan, China, Europe and the United States. Then in 1859, Jamshedji Tata went to Hong Kong to expand his father's business. In 1868, Aged 29, after nine years of working with his father, Jamshedji started a trading company with a capital of 21,000 rupees that later evolved into the Tata Group. He had four goals in life, setting up an iron and steel company, a world-class learning institution, a unique hotel and a hydroelectric plant. In 1872, he focused on cotton manufacturing and subsequently founded mills at Nagpur, Bombay and Kurla. It was very unusual of a person coming from a priestly family in the Parsi community to get into business, but with his education and entrepreneurial skill, Jamshedji Tata started the House of Tatas. He went abroad, he got collaborations, he somehow found a way to get around the British rules and his ambition was to start an iron plant, a cotton plant, a top-class hotel and other companies. To this extent, Tata did succeed. The original founder of this house, Jamsadji Tata, and that's why we have a massive, the biggest corporation perhaps in India of Tata Company. An adventurous and ambitious young man, he dreamed of building an iron and steel company. The iron and steel idea was sparked when Jamshedji was on a trip to Manchester to check out new machinery for his textile mill. By the early 1880s, the idea took a shape when Jamshedji Tata met Swami Vivekanand on a ship in 1893, 
where they discussed Tata's plan of bringing the steel industry to India. Impressed by Vivekanand's views on science and leadership abilities, Tata wanted him to guide his campaign in establishing a research institute in India. In 1901, Jamshedji began organizing India's first large-scale ironworks and six years later, these were incorporated as the Tata Iron and Steel Company, now known as Tata Steel. It was here that Jamshedji offered Indians shorter working hours, well-ventilated workplaces and provident fund and gratuity long before they became compulsory in the West. In 1902, it was Tata's vision of meeting all the needs of the workers in one place that was eventually reflected in the township of Jamshedpur. Tata Iron and Steel Company Limited is Asia's first and India's largest steel company, became world's fifth largest steel company after it acquired Chorus Group producing 28 million tons of steel annually. In 1906, he also planned for the Bombay area hydroelectric power plants that became the Tata Power Company. You see, at that time there were very few Indian businessmen. All the manufactured goods required in India were coming either from Manchester, Lancashire or from some European sources. The British at that time had a vested interest in seeing that Indian industry did not take off. They viewed India with this huge market as a good source for their revenues. Evading all these regulations, all these rules, Jamshedji Tata set up a steel plant in Jamshedpur, which is now in modern day uh, Jharkhand. And that was one of the biggest enterprises in Asia even at that time. Similarly, he was a pioneer in setting up cotton industry using the agriculture products coming from the Deccan area, Gujarat, Maharashtra, and most famously, he set up the first spinning mill in Nagpur. These were the highlights of his life. Jamshedji Tata continued to be an important figure in the industrial world, even in his later stages of life. Later on, Tata became a strong supporter of Swadeshism. The Swadeshi movement did not start until 1905. However, Jamshedji Tata represented these same principles throughout the time he was alive. Swadeshi was a political movement in British India that encouraged the production of domestic goods and the boycott of imported goods. While on a business trip to Germany in 1900, Jamshedji became seriously ill there and passed away on May 19, 1904. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. India remembers Jamshedji Tata as one of the big founders of modern India. He is credited with planning Jamshedpur, one of the first industrial planned cities of India. Jamshedji plan was for a city extended, where the workers existed not only to provide the labour for the industry, but also to be the rightful recipients of the comforts and conveniences a city could provide. It was the culmination of all the ideas that formed part of his vision for his work in Bombay. Jamshedji Nusirwanji Tata's actions as a passionate citizen of Bombay were devoted to building a better life for the residents of the city. Down the ages, they also reflected the Tata Group's core values. Jamshedji Tata built the most recognized and iconic structures of Bombay one of them being the Taj Mahal Hotel. Overlooking the gateway of India, the hotel is intertwined with the history of the metropolis itself. Jamshedji is said to have developed the idea of the Taj more out of patriotism and his love for the city than as a commercial proposition, because he firmly believed that Bombay needed to have a big hotel. Bombay also saw Jamshedji's skills as a builder of cities the need for suitable and affordable accommodation for Englishmen of modest means promoted him to build the Jim Khana Chambers, a block of 16 flats in the fort areas of Bombay. As his financial status improved, he wanted to build houses to rent out at affordable rates and reduce congestion in the city. For this, he worked to reclaim vast tracts of land from the Mahim Creek between the suburbs of Bandra and Santa Cruz. In 1887, Jamshedji acquired the Sikh Dharamsi Mills. He called it the Swadeshi Mills, 
and saw it as India's solution to be economically self-reliant through the industrialization of the country. The next few struggle-filled years saw Jamshedji invest in new machinery and the latest technology. More importantly, he introduced a slew of noble employee welfare measures in Bombay at the Swadeshi Mills. They included mills with improved light and ventilation, accommodation with decent sanitation, grains at cost price, medical facilities, and also pension and provident funds for the employees. In 1896, Bombay fell victim to the bubonic plague. Leading citizens, including Jamshedji Tata, accompanied the squads of soldiers, police, and medical teams that went out to fight the plague and allay the fears of the public. It took four years of ruthless measures to free the city of the infection. It was against the background of this terrible epidemic that Jamshedji Tata announced his decision to build the Taj, a great hotel to help restore the image of Bombay and attract visitors from abroad. To highlight Bombay's cultural and social scene, Jamshedji Tata established Bombay's most famous clubs. With his friend Firoz Shah Mehta, he established the Ripon Club in 1883 to create a platform for political debate. As a firm believer in athletics, sports and also recreational activities, he played a prominent part in building the Parsi Gymkhana in 1885, to which he remained the largest contributor of its funds. The Parsi Gymkhana till date remains a landmark of modern-day Mumbai. Another lasting legacy was Jamshedji Tata's emphasis on renewable energy. As far back as 1875, Jamshedji Tata envisioned harnessing the power of running water to generate clean, renewable energy. He wanted it to be available to run the tramways of Bombay, to supply electric lighting, and to have a balance over for the supply of power in a few cotton mills and small local industries. The dream was to later take the shape of a hydroelectric plant, which was inaugurated on February 8, 1915. Jamshedji's son, Sir Dorabji, said it was the development of the idea of manufacturing power of Bombay. As early as 1901, Jamshedji also brought one of the first motor cars to Bombay. Similarly, he brought an electric piano to his home and the cinematograph when it first appeared. All his purchases were not so much for himself as to let India know what was new in the great world across the seas. With inputs from Vipul Agarwal, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Jamse Chi Tata was a humanist whose ideals and visions shaped an exceptional business conglomerate. His philanthropic principles were rooted in the belief that for India to climb out of poverty, its finest minds would have to be harnessed. Charity and handouts were not his ways. And so he established the JN Tata Endowment in 1892. Today, there are multiple trusts operating under the umbrella of the Tata Trusts, which have played an exemplary role in supporting social development in India for decades. Giving back to the society was Jamshedji's passion and his legacy. Over several decades, the Tata Group set up many trusts for the upliftment of the underprivileged sections of society in India. The Tata Trusts include the JN Tata Endowment, Sir Durabji Tata Trust, Sir Ratan Tata Trust, Lady Tata Memorial Trust, Lady Meherbai D Tata Education Trust, JRD and Thelma J Tata Trust, to name a few. Each of them have contributed enormously to nation building. The group has given the country some of its finest institutes, like the Indian Institute of Science, the Tata Institute of Social Sciences, the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research and the National Centre for Performing Arts. The genesis of the Tata Trust can be traced back to the extraordinary humane thinking of its founder, Jamshedji Nusharwanji Tata. Jamshedji Tata's inherent generosity and love for the country led him to start, in 1892, India's first scholarship for higher studies. The JN Tata Endowment was the first of the Tata Trust, marking the beginning of the 126-year journey of nation-building and community welfare. Like you see, now you have 
post 1991 when the cadbury report came in csr became a ticking activity but tata group has been doing csr activity from the very beginning almost from 1868 onwards more going from 1900 1900 to onwards when they expanded their business so now as i said when they were may allowing to set up steel plants or chemical plants or textile industry or you know uh, fmcg group group industries now most of these plants which they were setting up were in completely barren lands there was nothing available at all and since they had a huge workforce to work they had to create facilities so out of their consciousness they created schools they created charitable institutions they created you know uh, areas habitables they created villages you know so they they have created almost a full township in a way like a government does now that is not because it was they were supposed to do it they were a company they were meaning business so if they are giving a job to you it is for you to decide to take up a job or not to take up a job but beyond they went jamshed ji tata pledged half his personal fortune about 3 million to setting up the indian institute of science in bengaluru for decades the institute has been instrumental in nurturing india's atomic energy and space programs several of india's foremost scientists have been closely associated with the institute including nobel laureate cv raman homi j bhaba vikram sarabhai and bharat ratna wadi cnr rao jamshed ji's value and love for the country were passed on to his sons durab ji and ratan ji as well an equally committed philanthropist Durab ji established Sir Durab ji Tata Trust in 1932 to advance learning and research. His entire fortune of 10 million was pledged to the Sir Durab ji Tata Trust. It included substantial shareholdings in Tata Sons, Indian hotels and other Tata companies, land and properties and 21 pieces of his wife's jewelry as well as the famous Jubilee diamond. Younger son Ratan ji also supported several institutions and deserving causes in his lifetime. including Mahatma Gandhi's struggle against apartheid in South Africa following his death his wealth went to the Sir Ratan Tata Trust established with a corpus of 8 million rupees in 1918 making it one of India's oldest charitable organizations there were two trusts formed in those days one was the Ratan Tata Trust and one was i think another Dorab by trust the tatas felt that earning of profits while going to build the industry should also involve the larger community so they gave enormous funds they wanted to set up a very big institution and i believe indian institute of science in bangalore was started by tatas tatas felt that some of the profits earned from a country from society should be ploughed back if you remember mahatma gandhi was the one who said a rich man or an industrialist is a trustee of that wealth for the country to be very fair to the tatas they honored the thought of mahatma gandhi in that sense they formed trust which gave money for education which gave money for various other things and therefore the tatas goodwill today all across the country is because of this trust and there is another aspect of tatas for which they earn a very well deserved name that is they follow strict ethics they never took shortcuts they never took to the black market They never did anything on the hand. They refused to pay bribes. Durab ji Tata also set up the Lady Tata Memorial Trust in his wife's memory, which he endowed with a corpus for research in leukemia. The Lady Meherbai D Tata Education Trust was formed to train women in hygiene, health, and social welfare. In 1974, the Navajbai Ratan Tata Trust was formed in memory of Sir Ratan Tata's wife Navajbai. In a similar vein, J R D Tata established trust in his and his wife Thelma's name. Currently there are many trusts that together operate under the umbrella of the Tata Trust. For more than a century, the Tata Trust have played a sterling role in supporting social development in India with a commitment to improving the quality of life of people, especially those on the margins. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. From an early foray into steel and automobiles to staying abreast of the latest technologies, the Tata Group today has a strong presence across diverse industries such as agrochemicals, automotive, chemicals, construction, finance, consumer products and hospitality. Here's a look at their journey of becoming the most valuable brand in India.
Founded by Jamshed Ji Nusarwan Ji Tata in 1868 and headquartered in Mumbai, the Tata Group is a global business conglomerate operating in over 100 countries across six continents. In 1902, the group incorporated the Indian Hotels Company to commission the Taj Mahal Palace and Tower, the first luxury hotel in India, which opened the following year. After Jamshed Ji's death in 1904, his son Dorab Tata took over as chairman of the Tata Group. Under Dorab's leadership, the group quickly diversified, venturing into a vast array of new industries, including steel, electricity, education, consumer goods, and aviation. Following Dorab's death in 1932, Nauroji Saklatwala became the group's chair. Six years later, Jahangir Ratanji Dada Bhai Tata, better known as JRD Tata, took over the position. His continued expansion of the company into new sectors such as chemicals, technology, cosmetics, marketing, engineering, and manufacturing, tea and software services earned Tata Group international recognition. In 1945, the Tata Group established the Tata Engineering and Locomotive Company to manufacture engineering and locomotive products. It was renamed Tata Motors in 2003. In 1991, JRD's nephew Ratan Tata succeeded him as chairman of the Tata Group. Upon assuming leadership of the conglomerate, Ratan Tata aggressively sought to expand it and increasingly focused on globalizing the group's businesses. In 2000, the group acquired London-based Tetley Tea and in 2004 bought the truck manufacturing operations of South Korea's Daewoo Motors. In 2001, Tata Group partnered with American International Group Incorporated or AIG to create the insurance company Tata AIG. In 2007, Tata Steel completed the biggest corporate takeover by an Indian company when it acquired the giant Anglo-Dutch steel manufacturer Corus Group. In 2008, the company made headlines worldwide in the automotive sector. On January 10th, 2008, Tata Motors officially launched Nano, a tiny rear-engine pod-shaped vehicle which was touted as the cheapest car in the world, priced at 1 lakh rupees. The first Nano hit the road in India in July 2009. Tata Motors purchased elite British brands Jaguar and Land Rover from the Ford Motor Company in 2008. Four years later, Ratan Tata retired and was succeeded by Cyrus Mistry. Mistry was abruptly dismissed as chairman in October 2016, reportedly over disagreements with members of the Tata family regarding business strategy. And Ratan Tata returned to the position on an interim basis. Ratan Tata's second stint as chairman ended in January 2017 when Natarajan Chandrasekharan was appointed to the position. In September 2017, the Tata Group announced plans to merge its European steel making operations with those of the German steel maker Tyson Group. The deal was finalized in June 2018, creating Europe's second largest steel company after ArcelorMittal. At that time, there were hardly 24 companies when JRD Tata, Jahangir Tata, the famous man who got even the Bharat Ratna took over. By the time he left, I believe there were nearly a hundred corporate and conglomerates which Tata's were operating, including Tata Consultancy Services, which is the biggest corporate unit because it's, it deals in software. It was way ahead of its time that a company like Tata felt they needed a consultancy company, and that a big company can give consultancy services to a whole host of industries. All those companies are thriving today, including Tata Motors, was started by. JRD Tata, which made trucks for the first time, with a collaboration with Mercedes-Benz, the first trucks made in India were Tata Mercedes-Benz. So they were great pioneers. They brought industry, and they were able to take technology from abroad, adapt it to India, make it a success here, and thrive. So they were the first pioneers in even bringing the most advanced technology to India. Tata Sons is the principal investment holding company and promoter of Tata companies. 
It holds the bulk of shareholding in the Tata Group of companies with land holdings across India including tea estates and steel plants. 66% of the equity share capital of Tata Sons is held by philanthropic trusts which support education, health, livelihood generation and art and culture. In 2018-19 the revenue of Tata companies taken together was 113 billion US dollars or 7,92,710 crore rupees. These companies collectively employ over 7,20,000 people. Each Tata company or enterprise operates independently under the guidance and supervision of its own board of directors. There are 28 publicly listed Tata enterprises with a combined market capitalization of over 160 billion US dollars or 11,10,308 crore rupees as on March 31, 2019. The Tata brand has been ranked as India's most valuable in the Brand Finance India 100 2019 report. The total value of Brand Tata has risen by 37% to 19.6 billion US dollars as compared to 14.2 billion dollars in 2018, surpassing the combined value of the second and third most valued brands in India. I think the achievements are countless, but in my opinion a few of them are that firstly it has taken to the world that even family businesses can be corporately run, professionally run. Second thing is it has taken the brand India globally. So this is one company which has been consistent, growing, not been defaulting and has been taking over businesses globally world over. If you look at the hotel business which they started way back in the 1900s, early 1900s. Now this hotel group has hotels across the world. They have properties which they own across the world. It is not giving a title. They are actually owning these properties. So, they are setting up business across the globe. Tata Tately, which is a big group company. Now, this was a UK, it is almost about 30, 35, 40 years. Now, they have this merger working very well. Tata Chorus was a brick. Similarly, there was a, the car company with Jaguar, which they took over. The economy was in recession. They did not still relieve people. They did not close down the company. They made it work up. And so, what they believe in is an ongoing concern. Now, this is something which is very special with this group. The five core Tata values that have helped their business to grow are integrity which encourages them to be fair, honest, transparent and ethical in their conduct and everything that must stand the test of public scrutiny. Responsibility which means integrating environmental and social principles in businesses and ensure to always give back to the people or society. Excellence, which means to be passionate about achieving the highest standards of quality by promoting meritocracy. Pioneering, to be bold and agile, courageously take on challenges by using deep customer insight to develop innovative solutions. And fifth, unity, invest in people and partners, enable continuous learning and build caring and collaborative relationships based on trust and mutual respect. Tata has always been a values-driven organization. These values continue to direct the growth and business of Tata companies. With inputs from Vipul Agarwal, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. So with this, it's a wrap on this edition of In-Depth. Thank you so much for joining us.